Welcome to my session on Enterprise Project Portfolio Management. I'm going to start by giving you an overview to what EPPM is. Then we'll look at some of the Microsoft tools that are available that support this practice. And then the different roles that are involved and the training that's required in order to bring your staff up to speed on EPM. Let's start by looking at the various aspects of EPM. Enterprise Project Management, EPM, was the initial acronym that Microsoft had coined with their early releases of the project server environment. As the environment grew, it became EPPM because now there is the portfolio management aspect of the tool suite. Let's talk about each of the aspects that EPM encompasses. So we start with portfolio management. That would be the full life cycle from an idea or a proposed project right through to the closing of a project. And there's some functionality that allows you to manage that intake process to identify what are the demands on the organization and what is the contribution to the strategic business drivers of the organization in taking on that project. Financial management covers the costing side of conducting a project and trying to manage forecasted costs against actual costs. Then we've got the work management and resource management, which really go hand in hand. With resource management, we want to know what is the workload of our resources? Who's doing what, when, and where? Work management is making sure we get good estimates on the work that needs to be done because it's those good estimates that allow us to get a better idea on what the resource utilization is. All of this ties in with integrated enterprise reporting. So if we've got good financials on our projects, we've got good work estimates, we've set up a resource pool and we're assigning those resources to the various projects so we're getting a better idea on what their workload is, then we've got some good data to give us some reports. The Microsoft Tool Suite has the business intelligence reporting aspect, which allows us to tap into things like Excel and SharePoint to get some executive dashboards and status reporting on our projects. EPM allows us to enforce standards. Back in the 90s when organizations were using tools like Microsoft Project to put together some project plans, there weren't a lot of standards in place. We didn't have standard templates, standard calendars, standard resource pools. It was difficult to do this until we had a server component available to us. So through Project Server, we're able to have a standardized calendar, a standardized enterprise resource pool, standard templates. And by having this available on the server, we're able to enforce those process standards to our project managers and any of the staff that are working on those projects. This next slide talks about the project life cycle. So we have the creation phase of a new project. When I speak about creating a new project, I've got to identify the demands to the organization. So these demands could be in the form of cost. What does it cost Can I, to execute this project? Resource workloads. What kind of resources do I need to execute this project? And then what's the return going to be to my business? How is this going to contribute to the strategic business drivers to my organization? When I'm going through the initial creation phase, I want to identify what those demands are and what the returns are. Once I've done that, I can move on to the selection phase. Through portfolio selection, what projects I should consider going forward with based on their contributions. As I move forward with the projects, I go into a more detailed work planning phase. I would use Microsoft Project for something like that because Microsoft Project gives me the ability to put a detailed schedule together. I could then now assign specific resources, named resources, to the various tasks within that schedule. And then in order to keep the schedule up to date, I'll move into the managing phase so I can collaborate with the team members. These would be the staff that I've assigned to the project. I can collaborate and get weekly or bi-weekly updates on what the status is of their assignments. 
I could also get that in the form of timesheets. So if my organization is interested in, in getting a better idea on costing tied to those work hours, then I may want to get detailed data entry on how many hours they, were, they spent each day. By collecting this, I've got the opportunity to do status reporting. So let's talk specifically about the Microsoft EPM tool sets that are available to support this practice. If the level of complexity is low, you're really just doing basic task management. You can get away with using something like SharePoint, setting up a team site, and collaborating with your team that way. But as the projects become more complex and you move up the scale, probably want to get more detailed scheduling capabilities that are available in Microsoft Project. And if your organization is large enough that you've got a lot of projects out there, you may want Project Server to give greater visibility to all of these projects. So it's through Project Professional and Project Server that allow us to do more detailed scheduling, detailed tracking, and collaboration in a server environment. The web-enabled tool within the server environment is referred to as PWA, short for Project Web App. So looking at a more schematic diagram of the different components that make up EPM, we have the client applications, Project Professional, and PWA, which requires a browser. And there are many different browsers that Microsoft supports for their PWA application. PWA is a SharePoint site. It's the main site that hosts all of the projects that have been published to the server. And then each one of those projects can have their own subsite available. And that subsite is available to host a list of issues, documents, a team calendar, key deliverables. So there are a number of different aspects within the project sites that are dedicated to each individual project. That's all supported by the Project Server application, which has a backend SQL database. So when talking about the different roles that are impacted by enterprise project management, the biggest group would be your team members, those individuals who are actually assigned or staffed to work on a project. The team members will need to learn the tool PWA, Project Web App. That's a fairly light tool, and depending upon what aspects of the tool an organization is deploying, you could probably get away with just a few hours of training. Then we have our project managers. The project managers is a key role to getting good data to report on. So the project managers need to understand Microsoft Project and how to use it in a server environment. So if you already know Microsoft Project, then it's really all about learning how to use that tool in a server environment and how to collaborate with your team using PWA. So usually a couple days of training is still required. Then we have the resource managers, which is another role. Resource managers may be involved in approving timesheets if an organization has deployed timesheets. They may be involved in assigning their staff to the projects. So when the project managers would assign a generic role and the resource managers would go in and confirm what named resource, which staff person will replace that generic role to perform the work. And then we have any of the stakeholders that have a vested interest in what the status of the project is. So we wanna give those stakeholders insight with some good views in our PWA environment and some reports possibly in the form of dashboards. We also have our IT staff that has been tasked with deploying, installing, configuring, setting up the various user roles that are gonna be using the environment and managing the security model around that. So the admin staff does require a fair bit of training. We wanna teach them the same thing we teach the project managers as well as a more intensive three-day admin class. Let's now take a look at these tools. I'm gonna to switch over to our PWA environment so you get a visual on what that looks like. This is our home page to Project Web App. From the home page, I've got a quick launch on the left-hand side that allows me to access various aspects of the environment. I also have tiles, and the tiles 
are new with version 2013 to enable me to work with touchscreen devices. So if I've got a tablet or a mobile device and I want to access my projects using my touchscreen, the tiles work great for that. I'll use the quick launch on the left hand side to select my project center. In the project center, I can get a list of all my projects. It gives me the name of the project and then an indicator that tells me whether the project on, is on time. I've got a custom field that shows me this funding source, the budget, and who the sponsor is. If I move my split bar to the left, I can get a rough time scale as to when the project is scheduled to start and finish. From the quick launch, I can also click on the task page to look at tasks that I personally have been assigned to. I'm currently working on a project which I have five tasks that have been assigned to me. PWA has many other areas which I could access. I could go into complete a timesheet. I could look at any outstanding issues and risks that have been assigned to me. I could even bring up the resource center and as a resource manager, I can see all resources that work under me and what their workloads are. Then under the strategy section, I have something called a driver library that allows me to look at any of the business drivers that have been set up for my organization. These are all custom business drivers that have been set up for my organization. And under the portfolio analysis, I can run a baseline scenario and find out what projects are recommended based on the cost of performing that project and the contribution to those business drivers. So you'll see a list of selected projects that have been suggested to add to my current portfolio. It gives me the total budget for those projects and how they contribute to my business drivers through a strategic alignment graph. So now that you've had a brief tour of PWA, let's move over to Microsoft Project. Microsoft Project, if you recall, is the more detailed scheduling tool that allows us to build those projects that we're going to publish out to PWA. So I've navigated to Microsoft Project and I've opened up a schedule. In Microsoft Project, I can see that same schedule with all of the detailed tasks that make up the project and who's assigned to those tasks. In Microsoft Project, I have a lot of different views I can access. I can change to a tracking gap to see how I'm doing against the original plan. The gray represents my original plan or baseline and the red or blue represents the current schedule. Anytime I make a change in the schedule, I'll save and publish that back to PWA so all the team members that are working on the project have the most up-to-date information. So now that you've had a quick look at Microsoft Project and PWA, I'll return to my slide deck. We've got a number of courses that address the training that's required for these different roles. So this grid shows the different roles up along the top. The two important roles that I discussed in this introduction were the project managers and the team members. The project managers do require a fundamentals in Microsoft Project, as well as knowing project at a more detailed level when working in a server environment. So we've got a couple of courses, one which is the fundamentals, and the second one is our Beyond Basics class, and that brings in the server component. The team members require a short course, not more than a few hours, on how to use PWA to submit updates to their project managers, as well as submitting timesheets or posting any issues related to a particular schedule they're working on. Portfolio managers will need to learn how to use the portfolio analysis tool to analyze what projects we should be going forward with. In addition, we also recommend they get the basic PWA training, similar to the training that team members would receive. Project office staff would get the same training as the project managers, the portfolio managers, and in addition, if you've got large-scale programs that you're deploying within your organization, you may want to configure your environment to accommodate reporting against programs. So we've got a special course for program management that the project, off the project office staff as well as program managers would attend. And finally, our administrators. 
We've got a very in-depth course on Mastering Project Server, which is a three-day class. In addition, we've got a Business Intelligence Reporting class and a course in Building Custom Workflows. I hope that gives you more insight, or at least answers the question, what is EPM? There are many aspects to the Microsoft suite of tools that support EPM. And if you'd like more information about our courses, you can go to our website, www.avalontraining.com.